Yeah. We both learned something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, outside of that, I mean, long metal, I never realized, here's something, I never realized how much land there is was up in the east part of Long Meadow. I used to go up, pack a lunch oh. and go up uh, hunting partridge and uh, woodcock up in that area once in a while. You mean out where the blueberries were? Oh, on oh. the corner of um, Maple Road is only hard surfaced as far as this corner up here. From here, it was all dirt. Uh huh. As far as Hazard, Hazardville Avenue, I guess you call it. Yes. Then it was all dirt back to a section uh, at the end of the golf course. <coughs> and there it was hardened from there to, to the caddy house. At the corner of Maple Road and Hazardville Avenue, there's a growth of hazelnuts. And we used to wait in the fall when those hazelnuts were ripe to harvest those hazelnuts. At the right time, there was also a blueberry patch there, beautiful wild blueberries. Now, as we're talking about these fruits and so forth, when I was trapping one day, I was trapping the meadows in a wetland, it happened to be in the fall, <clears throat> and I came across a, a vineyard of, har of wild grapes, a whole vineyard, all up in the trees and all. But, of course, you didn't have any grapes on it at that time. Was that down in the meadows? Down in the meadows. Almost on the Connecticut line. So it was cultivated? It was somebody's? Well, I was all alone when I found them. Right. Then I said to my sister, you know, <clears throat> well, that's another story about my sister, but she was a marvelous cook and also a wonderful baker. She could do anything. I says, Em, there's a vineyard of wild grapes. And also, there's an area of black blueberries down there. When the time is ripe, I'm going to go down there and see if we can get those wild grapes and what they're like. She said, well, do that. So when they were ripe, I did go down. And they were so bitter, I said, oh, my God, they'll never make anything out of this. Uh, but yeah. my mother and sister could make the best jellies and jams out of those great grapes. They're beautiful. And of course, the blackberries weren't any time, but those wild grapes. After that, every year, I used to get, go down and get grapes. Right down here, <clears throat> there used to be two big walnut trees uh, off the side of the hill. See, down well, here, you, that don't, big you don't know where you, know, you don't know where Mr. Oh, no. Broadwell used to live. You probably don't even know Mr. Broadwell. I don't. Uh, well, Mr. Broadwell had a house down here, not across Devon's Avenue, up just one one block up. He had a gardener, the Gillarani family. And that garden used to make big, big gardens up on top of the hill. And he also had a pool that he had, concrete pool. He blocked up Long Meadow of the Raspberry Brook. Alongside of his hill on going down, there was two big, big walnut trees. And we used to wait for the frost, the first or second frost, every fall. And that's when they would drop down. I'd go down there with a sack and load them up, bring them home so we could have them in the wintertime. Wonderful. <clears throat> I had an old flat iron, <laughs> cast iron, flat iron, and a hammer. I used to crack them open. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, a this has been so <clears throat> great. That was, Hearing that was these wonderful. stories <laughs> of a, like a rural long meadow. <clears throat> oh, I started to tell you. <clears throat> and living off the land. Uh, uh, we did. So in the ninth grade, we used to pedal our bicycles to the junior high school. I was in the ninth grade. It was a Friday afternoon. <clears throat> and then we'd go to the Long Meadow Country Club to see if we can get a round of golf. And I did get a round of golf when I was going home. And at the corner of Hazardville Avenue and Shaker Road, there was a fire department. And I knew Breck, he was the chief of the fire department. In those days, they were all volunteers. Oh, yeah. And I'm riding my bicycle, and I said, well, I got a, 
walked the bicycle along Hazardville Road, Maple Road, till I came to the hardened part here because you couldn't drive it. I, he said, where are you going? I said, going home. He said, no, you're not. I'm not. He says, we got a forest fire going here, and you're going to fight the forest fire. We need everybody we can get. I was about a pretty husky guy at that time. I said, well, I don't know. I, my folks are home, and they don't know where I'm at. He says, we will tell him where you are, and we will bring you food wherever you go. Well, to make a long story short, we fought that fire all night long until about 10 o'clock the following morning, and we, it was contained about 10 o'clock, and we never came out of the woods, so I don't know how much. And that was all Longmeadow land. Wow. Uh, starting from where, near the Longmeadow Country Club, where Wolf, Wolf Stomp Road is now. And that, I realized how much land Longmeadow had at that time, because this is all woods in here. Right. Well, we're coming to the end of our half hour. Well. See how fast it went? That's the worth the end of it. I told you. Okay. It was great. Thank you so much for coming. Uh -huh. That was right. great. And thank you for watching. Wow. We really enjoyed our visit great. today with Very Guy nice D'Antonio.